Carnage. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. It's Carnage Wednesday when you start watching this. <sighs> um, wow, guys. Wow, wow, wow. Max, talk to me. How did your um, uh, round go, mate? Not great. Just like the other previous two rounds. I ended up on 947. I think I'm sitting in the top 47%. Um, yeah, look, no one really performing superbly. Like, I had Rapana with a little pot. He went okay. Um, I captain Hines, who shit the bed. I traded out Moses the week before. He tunned up. I traded out Drinky for Pappy. Drinky tunned up. Um, yeah. So, so whoever, you, so whoever oh. you trade out is almost guaranteed to score well. Well, let's hope not. Um... But, yeah, it didn't go well this week. Lassie played shit. Well, he didn't play shit. He's just, you know, the points didn't go his way. Yeah, it was a frustrating week. But how did you go? I know you had a decent little decent little step up. Yeah, a little bit of a, a bounce back. So I scored 1,113. Uh, my... Rank went up 40,000 points, 40,000 spots. So um, I was fortunate enough to loop Cleary, which um, I managed to keep the VC on him. I was death riding the fuck out of Turbo that whole game. Pretty happy that he only scored, I think he only scored like 80, did he? 90? 86, I think. 86. So, which could have been so much more, honestly. He could have, um, I mean, that try that got denied because of that, that rule, Jesus. Um, yeah, I mean, his, his 86 could have been 120 again. Turbo is due for a score, and as a Dragons fan, I think it is this weekend, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm gonna be at that game, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be cheering him on. Actually, as a captain, I just don't yeah. want him to go too hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. There's a few options this week for captain team. We'll go through. Obviously, that. Yeah, look. Hopefully, this is my week. God, no more. Stop. Throw on the towel. Let's go over like your side currently. We'll go from your side down. Um, how did your players score? Who have you? Who have you? Who's got the spotlight on at the moment um, that you're thinking about moving on? Or yeah, go over your side for us. Let us know how you went. Look in hooker. I had to play last week because I've I've still held on to Wade Egan. He might be gone this week. Um, to someone we'll talk about. Uh, forward Mitch Barnett, fifty five, very meaty, mediocre. Taylor May, uh, Terrell May, sorry, forty four. Meh. Um, Palacia and Hughes, I'm considering getting rid of Palacia this week. Oh, sorry. Um, Tupanua, very meh. Um, Sean Lane, Smithies, both very meh. Um, Pia Cora, obviously injured now, which sucks. Don't know what I'm going to do with him. I had Lukey, um, didn't play him. Yeah, uh, a lot of meh in the second row. Yeah. Pines and Brooks, halfback, Metcalf, Galvin, 5'8". I'm pretty happy with Metcalf. They've got a couple of decent games. He's kicking. I don't know how long that's going to last for, but I'm riding it. Galvin looks to be an absolute stud and looks like you can actually play him every week. He's like playing that well. Um, yeah. Center wings, Rapana, RTS. Taylor May, to, uh, Burbo, Arthurs, Tuapiki, Strange. Doing okay. Yeah. Tuapiki's obviously might have to move him on now. And then Turbo and Pappy, you know, decent on the weekend, but nothing crazy. Do you think um, that's the last we see of Tuapiki for a while? I think he misses this week, and I think Charms probably comes back next week. And I think if they look really good this week, even if Charles isn't ready next week, they might stick with Roger at fullback 
if they look yep. really good. So probably be the end of him. Look, there's a few options to go to for people that have him. So don't stress too much about it. You know, might be a certain Parramatta half that could be a blessing in disguise. Yeah, Moses has gone for a while. It's looking like a six to eight weeks. Mm. So that is um, a big blow for Para because they've actually looked really good to start the year. I've been pretty impressed by them. Um, anyone else in your side that you're thinking about moving on, or is that are you pretty happy with your side? Palacea, Lukey yep. to Kai Pierce Paul this week. I think Kai Pierce Paul, he's, he's locked up that spot, especially with Lucas on the extenders this week. Um, and he looks really good. He's passing the eye test. Palacea, I'm, I'm looking at Tommy Hazelton with all the Sharks injuries in the middles. I think he's going to get a little bit bigger of a role. And I think I think he's passing the eye test. I think he looks really good, Tommy Hazelton. And if Wade Egan doesn't get named this week, he's gone for Coruscant. Like, Coruscant's yeah. got a real low break even. Looked great. He's kicking. So, yeah, those are probably the three moves I'm looking at this week. I'm pretty sure he's named. Who, Wade Egan? Yeah. Yeah, but he's been named the last three weeks and they've scratched him Yeah, um, right before the round. So I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, it's going to be a wait and see. I um, Going over my side, um, obviously, like, I I was lucky enough with Robson. Um, I picked Robson up from the start and he's been – Pretty much been the best hooker to start the season. Yeah. I think he scored the most points so far, which kind of surprised me a little bit, but happy with it nonetheless. So I've got Cotter. I bought in Cotter on the weekend. He only scored a 47, but the game wasn't exactly one of those games that is Cotter friendly. Yeah. And obviously with a little bit of a niggle, you know, um, I don't, you, you can't really expect too much from middles in very high scoring games like that. So um, if you've got Cotter, obviously um, hold him. He's got a little bit of a niggle, but he is named this week. Um, I've got Terrell May. He's named to start this week, um, which will be big. I think that game between the Roosters and the Panthers is going to be a tug of war. I don't know. I, I can't imagine that that game is going to be high scoring. Purely because, obviously, Cleary's out. I don't think... I think they're going to focus entirely on defence. And Schneider, he comes in for Cleary. I don't know. He could do a job and they could still score points. Um, a lot of the attack's probably going to go down Luai's side. So, um, it could be I a low-scoring game. But, I think yeah. the game sets up well for Terrell May. Like, I think it'll yeah. be more of a grind. I think it'll be great for him. And, and I think he'll also have that extra motivation going up against his brother. He'll want to prove something. Mm. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think if you've got him, you'd be happy with the start. Um, Firma, I played Firma, Lane and Smithies. Lane obviously only scored a 35. Meh. Um, for, yeah, very meh at the moment. Like, I'm – like. There's no reason to trade Lane out, but if Lane doesn't score a try, Fuck. he's shit. <laughs> he doesn't um, have the work rate that I thought he'd have. Fuck. There's yeah, there's like there's no work rate. If he doesn't score a try, that's thirty five points. That's what you're going to get. Um, and I usually Lane would be a a set and forget all year. Plug him in. Um, and he will score you well. But now I'm starting to think maybe Lane is more of like a match-up play, and you, you could almost get away with not playing. Are you concerned now that Dillbags is probably going to move right and Blaze to a lag? He's going to play left with Sean Lane? Yeah. Like, yeah, like... I, I mean, I can't see that. Oh, I don't know. I can't see it happening. Why would they disrupt that combination? You may as well just keep, like, deal bags on the left there. He's worked his combinations there with those players, you know, all season and all of last season. Why move him to half? But I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um. I played Firma. He got updated to 53. 
not bad. Look, it's not bad. You'll take it. Look, 53 in a side that got absolutely hammered. Yeah. So you yeah. think, like, if you chuck an attacking stat on the end of that, he's up to 70. Yeah. So I wouldn't stress too much if you own um, Firma. Peter Cora's obviously not named this week. He got 57 in a side that got battered as well. Obviously, there was a couple of attacking stats there. I think he got a line break and a line break assist. But he's got that in him. Yeah. He's, you know. Yeah. Um, Tupanua with a 40. He's very underwhelming at the moment. I don't very, know. Yeah. Yeah, very mad. Pretty much all of the mid ranges, like you know, we're at the start of the season, everyone was like, "It's mid range city." Like this is the year of the middies. None of them. Yeah, I know. None of them have done anything. So, um, oh. yeah, Smithies with a thirty eight. I, yeah, meh again. <laughs> I'm just like, um, I like. Smithies is going to be that player that will get you 50 tackles a game and he'll get you 50 points. If it's a high-scoring game, he won't score well. That's it. Like, he, he's got no attack. He's got, yeah. Question for you. For the guys you just named, like Lane, Tupanua, Smithies. Obviously, if you have Piakura or Luki, you can, you can consider moving them because I think Piakura, they're talking about potentially four weeks now. Um, but if it was Lane... Tupanua or Smithies or Therma, which guy would you want to move on? Oh, probably probably Smithies because he's got the less upside of all of them. Mm, yeah, yeah. You want to yeah. you want to have some upside in your two RF, and if you're gonna, you know, Lane, Piacora, Therma, they've all got upside. Where Smithies, where where's he where's his upside, like? Also, the the Horsburgh issue of him coming back, does that take minutes away from Smithies? Maybe not, but yeah, that could be an issue as well. We should see what the go is this weekend because um, Horse is named at 19. He's yeah. in the extended. So I dare say that'll be a late change. He'll come in. But Ricky has said that Smithies is a is an 80-minute um, lock. So I don't know. I don't know where they're going to go, but this week's going to be a big watch. Yeah. Um, I traded in um, Finau. Is it – how do you pronounce that, Max? Is it Finau? Finau? Who, who are you talking about? Tigers? Samuel? Oh, uh, Finau. 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 Is it Finau? Yeah. So I um, traded him in. Um, I He passed the eye test for me on the weekend, and the bench looks very pleasing for the Tigers this week for him. Yeah. So I – He's got a pretty low break even. Like he's got a minus thirty two break even. There's a, there's a lot of cheapies on the Tigers watch um, this week. I know you're interested in a couple of them. Yeah, look, mainly Coruscant. Look, I, I looked at Fenor Pole, uh, pretty good base. Looks to be in a decent minute role there. Um, but the only one I'm legitimately looking at is Coruscant, just because of that break even and that. But Obviously, everyone, if you don't have Galvin and you're listening, go get fucking Galvin. He's going to make a boatload of cash. He looks great. So, yeah, if you miss out on Galvin, give yourself an uppercut. Fuck. Yeah, 100%. Galvin's in both of our sides, I believe. Where do you, like, if you were to really think about it, where do you think Galvin tops out? (sighs) It's hard to say because yeah. you don't know how the Tigers are going to go, but the Tigers got battered by the Raiders in round one, and he still scored like a 50-something. Yeah. Um, he has like he's decent got- base. Like he takes runs, he tackles, mm. has the attack and upside. Uh, it's, look, it's hard to say, but maybe around that – look, I don't want to get crazy. Let's say around the 500K mark. Yeah. I was going to say anywhere between that – I'd say – at most 560, 550. Yeah. He's going to need a long string of games to get up to that price because all it's going to take is for the Tigers to have one bad game and, yeah. you know, he's in trouble as well. But as we said, if you don't have him already, get him in because he, with the carnage that's happened right now, you need to to be able to generate some cash. 
Yeah. And um, he's your he's your man. Uh, Brooksy, 53, very happy. Well, not very happy, but look, he played the Eels, who um, he was up against Dylan Brown. Well, not literally up against, but he... Luke Brooks and Dylan Brown, both of the two best 5'8s at the moment in Supercoach with Munster out. Um, I think Brooks is in for a huge week this week against the Dragons. Yeah. He but... is... Um, yeah, he's... I think this is going to be his week to, to potentially turn up. Look, if Turbo wasn't in that side, I'd probably say he's a sneaky V. Shout. Yeah. But... With Turbo, obviously, you can't go there. But if you wanted to, like, anti-pod Turbo and maybe do a sneaky V on Brooks, it could be a play. But, yeah, I think he's going to go big this week. Um, I bought in more Talo. He updated to 56. I mean, the Sharks got pumped and he managed to score a 56. So, look, he's in my side for the... Like, I'm going to be looking at him as a, a season keeper. I don't really want to move him on. Like, they're in for their first buy next week. Mm. So, I've got cover. He can just stay in the side for the rest of the year. Look, Mulatalo, if he scored a try against the Tigers on the weekend, he gets 80. Yeah. So, I just, you know, like, he's just one of those players that he's either going to get you a good score or a mediocre score. And it's just the, you just have to ride the wave with Mulatalo. He's obviously made cash. He's almost up to 700K already, and he's got a break even of 29 this week. If so, he would have told me that score before I watched the game and told me Tigers beat him, whatever it was, 26 to 6 or whatever the hell it was, and you told me Mulatalo scored a 53, I would have thought he would have scored a 12. Yeah. Or a 20. Yeah. He was honestly, I'm pretty sure he was on 28. Or, or something like 30 in the last few minutes of the game, but there was a lot of, like, junk points towards the end. I um, Yeah, I was surprisingly happy that he updated to that score. But, but yeah, obviously, RTS with the 79, he showed everybody, you know, the old RTS. He's back at fullback this week. He is a genuine captain choice against yeah. the Knights. 100%. Yeah, I've got the currently have the V on Turbo and the C on RTS. Yeah, I like it. I'm definitely considering the same. I, I was I was honestly thinking straight C, but now that I look at it, I'm like, yeah, RTS at fullback, he could he could do a bit of damage there. Yeah. Um, May with a thirty. Yeah, Turbo Ponga eighty sixes. Um, that was my side. So let's um. Let's talk about the carnage that is. Let's talk about teams list that wow. just dropped and, and just ruined people's week. Um, righto. Let's get into it. So Roosters and Panthers. Um, I don't know if you've heard of a guy named Nathan Cleary, but he's not playing this week. Thank God. Praise yeah, Christ. you're not an owner. Haven't been an owner. And last two weeks, like two weeks ago, wasn't too bad, but last week was shocking. And um, look, we never wish injuries upon anyone, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty ecstatic that he won't be destroying my super coach side this week. So a little bit of luck's gone my way there. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's some players that I think people should be eyeing off in this game, um, and they're not one week plays, but they're definitely players that. Over the next few weeks, could definitely um, be a point of difference for the sides like Dom Young, oh. Joey Manu, Sam Walker. Like they've got the Bulldogs next week. I know it's a tough matchup against the Panthers now, but if you can set your side up nicely for next week when they do have the Bulldogs, and you've got, say, if you go Cleary down to Sam Walker, and you somehow use that money to bring in Dom Young or bring in Manu. You could definitely have a very good score next week if the Roosters turn up against the Bulldogs. Oh, man. Even this. Honestly, I'm tipping the Roosters to win this week. No Cleary. Still no James Fisher-Harris. Lewis and Sorensen. I know they lost Lindsay Smith and um, Santa Smith, but Kiri's back. I honestly tip the Roosters to win this week. And, man, Dom Young. Oh, my gosh. He looks yeah. 
so good. Um, yeah. Yeah. I And this, especially with his connection with Teddy, it looked really good. I I will not knock anyone who brings in Dom Young. Yeah. I mean, look, does he have a negative BE? I think he's got like – or it's be. very low. It would have yeah. to be very low, I think. I'll, I'll just have a quick look. Um, he had 150 on the weekend. Yeah, 150. Yeah, he's got a negative 15 BE. Yeah. And he's going to keep that 150 in his rolling average rolling into the Bulldogs next week. Yeah, yeah, he's a monster. Yeah, I think if you if you don't get him this week, um, he could be potentially out of reach in the next two weeks. Yeah. Um, I agree, though. I think the Roosters potentially get up this game this game, but I don't it wouldn't shock me if the Panthers just grind just grind out a win. I mean yeah. if you were to have a look like it's gonna geez, it's gonna be a battle in the middle. Yeah, it's gonna be a good game. Um I I'm tipping the Roosters. Uh, I just think losing Cleary is so big for that team. And they're not still not having James Fisher Harris is massive as well. Um I know they lost Sandra Smith but Kiri comes back in. It's at um, Allian, so home game for the Roosters. I think they just get up. Yeah. How good's Liam Henry? It's a freak. It's a beast. He is, like, I genuinely see him being a 450K to 500K player sitting on sitting next in your third to fourth front row position. If, you, if you've got him in your side right now, you should be absolutely stoked because he will make you a lot of money. I don't, and I'm not happy that I don't have him. Yeah. He's – um, I just think, like, if you – even over the origin period, as soon as the guys like Yo go off to, to origin and stuff, you're going to have Liam Henry that's just going to come in and do a job for, yeah. you know, during that period, and I reckon he's going to be a staple. But um, Satili obviously survived. He's starting. Angus on the bench still. Egan comes in. Connor Watson. Um, Sewell Wong is in the extended reserves. He's just going to hang around, I think, until someone fucks up, and then he'll be yeah. back into the side. Uh, moving on. Next game, we've got the Bunnies and the Bulldogs. Oh. The, bunnies are, <laughs> the Bunnies are fucked. <laughs> Straight up. Oh, my God. Uh, like um, if there was a if there was a game for a side to turn around their season already, this has to be it. If there was a game where if you don't win it, the heat is turned up to fucking ten thousand degrees Celsius. It's this game for the bunnies. If they lose to the dogs, I think they're at home, aren't they? Yeah, at home. Fuck me. Jason yep. Demetrio will be in the hot seat. Um yeah, oh, I'm tipping the dogs to win this game. <laughs> yeah, honestly, man, the dogs look good on the weekend. I was impressed. Like, I, I geez, I said all preseason, Connor Tracy should come into this side, and he's in the side, and he looked amazing last week. Looks Same really with Karaz. Mm. Like, Karaz looked unreal on the weekend. The amount of meters that he made, tackle breaks, like, he is a beast. He was a machine. Um, I thought Taff had it. I've shit on Taff a fair bit and said Taff shouldn't be the number one, but I actually thought he had a pretty good game on the weekend. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean the Bulldogs can definitely. Um, like, can you imagine if the this this Bulldog side gets a gun fullback? Like, they could oh. genuinely be a top ten side. Mm, like, yeah. they just need that X factor at the back. I yeah. just yeah. I don't know where the bunnies go though. Like, oh, geez, I reckon put Whiten into the halves. Like, I don't know what JD's doing with Dean Hawkins, but Dean Hawkins is not the answer. No, I don't think so. I think Ilias should be in the side. Um, look, I think Troll should be in the centers. And I think Jai Gray, that young bloke that we've seen in the trials, he looked great. Maybe try him at fullback. Or, or, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of questions about this side. Like the decision to not start Cookie last week, I thought was fucking crazy. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Moving Murray to an edge, but super coach wise, you know, if you got Karaz, congratulations, he's a beast. 
probably going to make you a bit of cash. I can't. He's not in my plans. But um, other than that, Salmon's meh. If you got Curran, awesome. Because I hear they're going to give him front row jewel, which is great. Um, yeah. I think it's round seven, isn't it? Don't they I do jewels so, yeah. in round six or seven? Yeah, I think so. Sam Hughes is an absolute plotter and he's becoming annoying, but yeah. I'm getting um I'm getting Frank Franklin Pele vibes already. <laughs> I don't like those vibes. Franklin Pele haunted me last year for a very, very long time. So I don't <sighs> like what do you do? Like what do you do with him? Like he's he's gonna be that player that will just get you twenty five points each week. Because for some reason yeah. Is he an AE nightmare? I don't know. He's borderline an AE nightmare. Um, if you can get rid of him, I'd suggest doing it, but I just don't know who. Maybe Henry? I don't know. Oh, yeah. If you if you don't have Henry in your side now and you have Sam Hughes and someone else in your front row bench spots, go and you, and you haven't suffered the wrath of teams this, this week, go Sam Hughes to Henry. Yeah. Um, I'd definitely be moving off that train quickly. I don't know. We were just sold a dud. Maybe he does have potential. He he's a great player. I just don't know if that translates over into Super Coach. It's just not getting minutes. Yeah. Uh, anything else to touch on the bunnies no. and the bulldogs? Train wreck. No. Nah. Cameron Murray. He's he's in doubt apparently, but he's named. Yeah. Colin Matungi's on my radar later on when the Bunnies actually find form. Yeah. But outside of that, no one else. Um, move on. Broncos, Cows. Geez, the Cows have come out, haven't they? They've looked good in attack. Defence, they sort of still don't look great, but in attack, they look unbelievable. Um, yeah, I got rid of drink water last week. He goes for a ton. Yeah, I'd look, I think this will be a tougher game for him. I know Broncos have got a few guys out, but Sailor can do a job. He's really good at the back when they played yeah. in there last year. Uh, Reynolds comes back into the side, which is a massive in for him. Still no Huss, which hurts him. But mm. I think this will be a lot tougher game for him than it was last week. Do you think they've rushed Reynolds in? I don't think he's, I don't think he's ready. He could be a late scratch out. You know, he could get scratched late, but I think I've seen someone somewhere saying that they seen him at training. He was full contact, boot the ball, bombing the ball, kicking goals and looked all right. So, I don't know. Hopefully, he's playing because it'll be make the game a lot better. But, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, Jeez, if you got on Holmes oh. and you captain him on the weekend, thanks get for fucked. coming. Yeah, get yeah. fucked and thanks for coming. <laughs> 147 or whatever it was. Oh, God. Yeah. Man, he looks good. Fuck, he looks good. Yeah. He's going to be one of those players that if you don't get in now yeah, or in done. the next, like, you're not going to get him. No. And um, he's just going to stay around that 800K mark for the rest You'll of the season. To, so Maybe wait around Origin, after Origin, if you want to try and get him in because, yeah. If you started with him, well done. Fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah. Props to you. Uh, Zach Laybuck gets named back again. Um, obviously, he wasn't named last week because of a little ankle niggle. Uh, Murray to a luggy. Dearden has come out and really impressed me to start the season. He looks good. Yeah, he's playing good. Um, man, he's such a strong ball runner. Um, and when they're on, he's just popping his head up everywhere. So... If he started with Deirdre and too, well in. He's um yep. playing well. Uh, McLean, Robson, Tamalolo. Tamalolo's fuck. obviously in for a 40-minute stint this week instead of a 20. If you have Tamalolo, fuck him off because who knows what Sean <laughs> Payton's doing every week. Nobody knows. So just don't – I wouldn't rely on Sean Payton. Just if you can get rid of him, get rid of him. Yep. 100%. Um, Fino Fuiaki. He is at a very good price. Um, well, 290K. 
and he's playing very, very well. And he's just got. I, I don't think he plays much. I, I don't think he plays more than sixty minutes. Yeah. But I think in that sixty minutes that he gives you, he's going to make you more money than two hundred ninety thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's a, he's and, a it's good attack. Yeah. A lot of attacking upside. Um, doesn't have we didn't have great base power last year, but he's shown a little bit more this year. Um, look, there's plenty of injuries to second roles now. Peter Cora being one, Lukey, if you still have him. So he's definitely a good trade in for either of those guys. Cartwright, apparently he's got fractured ribs. If you have him, if you want to make a bit of cash. Yeah, I wouldn't knock it. Yeah, if you if you're not going with Kai Pierce, I think your second best bet would be to go to Finifuiaki. Yeah, so I, agree. I um I'd love to have both. I'm yeah. hoping to get I'm hoping to have both. If one of my mid rangers fails again next week, um I will definitely be considering going down. Yeah. Um blah blah blah. No one else really. Not um really. Yeah, Connor's name. Apparently yeah, Cotter's been... named. He's sweet. Yeah, Cotter's named. He's sweet. I think he has a big game this week against the Broncos. Uh, Dragons Manly. So, I... Fuck, man. I'm a Dragons fan, as we know, and last week was so frustrating. I genuinely think that if the... Dra... If, if um, Mariner puts that ball down and the Dragons go three tries ahead into half time, I think they win that game. He's, I think he's bombed like three or four tries in that game. It's Fuck. unbelievable. Like, it's... I don't understand. Like, if you're... Yeah, I mean, look, accidents happen, but the way that that swung the game was insane. Like, the Dragons were playing so well, all he had to do was put the ball down, and then they would have gone into half time like, what, 24 to 4? Oh, who knows? They could have put on more after that. Look, I think Dragons look great in attack. My concern for the Dragons is defensively, they don't look very well, good. And, um, yeah. fuck, I think Manly could put a fucking score on them this week. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm afraid. I'll tell you what, though. Um, Zach Lomax has turned into someone of very big super coach relevance. I like him. He's base. He wants to play. I don't know too much about these. I know he doesn't want to be there, but he's obviously um, he's obviously fighting or showing other sides yeah. that he's the player that they want, and that's what I think he's doing. I think that Lomax is coming out and he's saying, right, I don't want to be here. I want to put my best game forward to, to showcase to other teams. And um, while he's doing that, jump aboard because he... I know, I know he wants to play center, but he seems like so much better at wing because he's so good at meter eating out of his own end. Like, yeah. and he's a workhorse. So I know he wants to play center, but fuck, man, he looks so good on the wing. Yeah. Yeah, he does. I mean, look, at the end of the day, um, Flanagan told him and, and stated publicly that Lomax was a poor center in regards to stats last yeah. season. So it doesn't help being in a dragon side that doesn't have the best attack, but maybe maybe Lomax is a, an out and out winger. But anyway. Um I had Moses Sully and I traded Sully. I'm glad. Look, I don't know what's going on, but the Sully that we saw in the trials is not the Sully that's playing at the moment. Um, Bird, Ravalawa, Flanagan, Hunt, Molo, Little. Yeah, there's no one real of relevance. Luciano, um, Lua. If you're a Jack DeBellin owner, maybe it's yeah, time JDB. to part I'd probably yeah. boot him. He's gone to the bench. Something's going on there. But, you know, obviously he didn't have a great game, a few mistakes, whatever. But, yeah, I'd probably get rid of Jack DeBellin. Tommy Eisenhoof starts at lock. If you still have him. Yeah, you know, hold on to him, see what he can do. Yeah, not too yeah. much relevance in the Dragons. Um, Tommy Turbo. Who Actually, my... before we move on the Dragons, what do you think 
about Ben Hunt maybe for a Cleary or a Moses or I mean I don't necessarily hate it. Yeah. But I still think that there's potentially better options. I, I don't know. Like I had Hunt has never been a player that stands out for me that I've never really wanted to bring in. And yeah. I think like with the with the jewels and having Brooks there and being able to move Brooks between five eight and halves and Dylan Brown and Hines still there and you know like DCE if you if you don't have if you don't have uh, Brooks and you want to go Hines down to DCE I don't hate that even though the attack is kind of not going DCE's way at the moment I don't know I mean it could do a job. Dragon's draw isn't too bad. I mean, what who have they got over the next over the next few weeks? So um let's have a look. So, Newcastle uh, next week. Oh fuck really after that. Then they got Tigers. Then they got Warriors at Wynn Stadium. At Wynn Stadium. I mean it's not it's not, it's not terrible. Bad. Yeah, it's not terrible. No. I think you could probably score, you know, upwards of sixties. In yeah. some of those games. So, yeah, I don't hate it. I don't mind it. Um, righto. Turbo, Garrick, Fuchs, Garrick. Cherry Evans, Paseca, uh, Ola Kawatu. I think Ola Kawatu, that's my hot tip for this week. Ooh. I think Ola Kawatu tons up. Fuck. Put, and then some. And then some. I think Ola Kawatu is going to have a field day this week. Um, what's your thoughts around... Burbo. Yeah, look, I haven't... The base isn't... The base power isn't as good as I thought it'd be. Um, look, I'm hoping there's some attacking stats this week. He hasn't, like, super impressed me. The only thing that would sort of worry me is I thought Waddell looked really good when he come on. Um, hopefully Waddell doesn't steal his spot, but... Yeah, look, I think I still think it's his to lose. I just I need to see a little bit more from him. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think he's going to be a sixty-minute edge. I don't think we're going to see him play eighty. Mm. Um, he might, he might play eighty, but I don't, I don't think it's going to happen anymore. I think he gasses. So, yeah, I mean. I reckon you could probably see maybe one more price rise out of him, maybe two at the best. Yeah. Like if you were to see more than two price rises out of him, he's going to have to go on a, a string of really good games. Yeah. And uh, Man- Manly's draw isn't like isn't that good over the next month or so. Like they've um, like they've got they've obviously got Dragons today um this week, which he could score well. Like Burbo could definitely score well this week. But then after that, you've got Panthers, you've got Warriors, um, you've got Titans who will have their full strength side back with with Fafita potentially Bartino. back. Yeah, no Bartino. Tino, Bartino, and then you've got Parramatta. So yeah. I don't see Burbo um, doing too much over the next five games, really. Yeah. Um, and then look, once he goes into Round once he goes into round eleven, like round eleven, you've got Broncos, Melbourne, Panthers as well. So, yeah. look, he could just be a plotter, which isn't great, but he could be like a decent hold over the Origin coverage because you know he's going to be there. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do with him yet. I haven't. I've got too many other fires in regards to injuries, so I haven't thought too hard about Burbo yet. Righto. Um, Titans, Dolphins. So, Jaden Campbell's back at one. Um, yeah, which is good. He's going to be a watch because, obviously, with he's going to have that 5'8 duel, doesn't he? He's got the 5'8 duel, yeah. Yep. So, if you're looking at a like a, a downgrade from Cleary and you really and you want to move potentially Campbell in via duels and move Brooks up, yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah, he's got a lot he, of attacking upside. He's got a lot of attacking upside. 
He's up against Dolphins. I mean, look, the Dolphins look okay, but they're still a side that could, on their day, have a bad day. Like, let's re- let's look back at round one, what happened there with the Dragons. So, I wouldn't... In- like, the Titans do look like they're in a lot of trouble with Tino out. But I think Dez could potentially, you know, turn this side around and just be like, you know, like, are we really wooden spoon contenders here? Mm. Uh, I just don't know if the Titans... It'll be a massive boost if they can get Fafita back in this side as quick as they can. He's obviously on the extenders. Um, Yeah, look, the side's not going good. They're looking like wooden spooners. I had them pegged around like 9 or 12. And it doesn't look like they're going to be anywhere near that at the moment. But Jaden Campbell does add a lot to this team. He is a freak in attack. Um, yeah, look, I, obviously, I'd tell everyone, wait and just watch him. You've got a couple of games to see how he looks, see how the side looks, and then make your decision. I wouldn't grab him this week. It is a decent matchup, but who knows? Yeah. Um, what are you doing with? Palacio. I think I'm going to move him on to Tommy Hazelton. I know Tommy Hazelton had a try on the weekend, um, which inflated these stats a little bit, but he had a 91. Take that try off. He's around 60 something. Um, he's got like a two break even. So I think I'm probably going to move him on to Tommy Hazelton or Flegler. I'm not, I haven't decided between the two yet, but um, I think with the injuries at the Sharks, it makes Tommy Hazelton relevant. So, but Palacia looks terrible. I know yeah. Tino's gone and people are like, oh, Palacia, Tino's gone. I don't see the minutes or the, like, the power base in this guy to make cash. I just don't see yeah. it. Yeah, I don't see it either. Ah, uh, Firma. Yeah, Dolphin, so. Hold. Yeah, firm as a hold. Yeah. Hammer yeah. could be anything this week. Ooh. I yeah. I really, really want to get Hammer in this week. So do I. But with um yeah, with with what's going on with the with the carnage at the moment, like you can't get everybody in. You can't. So he's gonna be a scary watch at seven thirty five against the Titans, that's for sure. Um, Asako, yeah, the team's pretty set, like Herbie, Bostock. I'm very tempted to play Bostock this week. I think he looked good um, oh. in round two. He got like a 77 or 77. I'll be playing him this week for sure. Yeah, I think Bostock is definitely a play this week. If you have issues down in your centre, you got got Tuapiki, you don't know what to do, blah, 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 I'd be going Tuapiki to Bostock if you haven't got him. And I'd be playing him. Uh, JMK, Flegler, Kafusi, Aiken. Max Plath is a big watch. Let's see what he gets in base. Uh, yeah. This could be a very... But the thing is, this, this game could be very, very free-flowing and it could be high-scoring. So it's, it could be hard to take away exactly what Plath is as a player. But, yeah, he's going to be a watch. If you own him, like, decent news that he's back in and Ray Stone's still on the bench. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Warriors, Knights. RTS is back at fullback for one game. Genuine captain option. Yeah. One game, though, I dare say Chance will be back next week. Yeah. But um, we could we could this could be a this is going to be a very good matchup, man. RTS up against Ponga. Like, I yeah, think get... Warriors are going to fucking roll the Knights. I think. Yeah, I think. Roll them. Yeah, I think so, man. I think um, the Warriors middles are going to have a field day. I think AFB yeah. AFB could genuinely be a good captain choice this week. <laughs> oh no, fuck AFB for a double. He, like, he, for me, like, he's the best prop in the game. I I think that if you were to really think about it and break it all down, I think overall AFB has a better overall game than Haas, 
than Tino. I, I don't know. I just think I think people would have a different light on AFB if he was playing for New South Wales or playing for Queensland. I think it's because he's a Kiwi. I couldn't put him above Haas just because his numbers, his stats, the minutes, the 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 unbelievable like tackle efficiency and that from Haas. But in regards to attack, he is the best attacking middle by a mile. Yeah. Like, he's, he's just got yeah. He's got everything about his game. He's got his offload, tackle breaks, meter runners, he's got tries in him. Like that's the only thing that Payne Haas lacks. Yeah. His try scoring ability. That's Doesn't why I've got. Line. Yeah, that, that's why I've got AFB above um, Haas in my opinion. But it's, it's so close, man. Like, yeah, oh, he's yeah. a freak. He's a freak, man. Yeah, that's my that's my take there. I mean, Mitch Barnett's had a season so far. You've got him in your side. Are you happy with that so far? Not like he's very meh. He's just yeah. he's doing a job. He's getting me like. 50 to 55 to 60, but I paid 610 for him. So he's just sort of doing whatever he's priced at. Yeah. I've got bigger fights. You've just, yeah. You've just paid for what he's going to give you. Mm. Oh, um, yeah. Jackson Ford, he's had a, he had a ripper game last week too. Yeah, man. He's, fuck, he's a go, all right? Fuck, he's I'm got so a tank. He doesn't stop. I'm honestly so disappointed the Dragons let go of him. What a mistake. Oh, man. Fucking huge mistake. And are you concerned um, to anyone who owns Ford? I wouldn't be too concerned because it seems like Webby likes him to play 80, but Nia Cora is back this week. So maybe he takes a few minutes. I don't know. Yeah, potentially. I mean, it's a three oh. forward bench. You've got Lussick on there. He's going to spell Egan. Yeah. Dylan Walker's back, which is, which is a big inclusion. They mm. they missed Dylan Walker last week. Yeah, he's so good for the middle. Um, yeah, I, like moving on to the Knights, Ponga. This could be another big game for Ponga. Like obviously Ponga only scored ninety on the weekend. Well, not only like it's still good. Ninety is a good score, good, yeah. but I think um, Ponga as a player doesn't look bad. He looks okay. perfectly fine. It's the yeah, Knights cool. attack. It's the Knights attack that looks very, very clunky. I just don't... I don't think Hastings was the the issue. I, like, if you put think Hastings Gamble. back in this side, yeah. I think they need to fuck off Gamble. Sorry to Tyson Gamble. Now you're watching, but I think Cogger at six, Hastings at seven. I know people think Cogger and Hastings are the same, but I just think Hastings... Gives Ponga a lot better ball than Cogger or Gamble give him. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like when they went on that run last year, you know that was a lot to do with Hastings, the spacing and all the ball, like the good ball he was giving to Ponga. Yeah, I just think they need to bring Hastings back in the side. But yeah, look, I think their middles aren't great too, and I think no Mazu, no Dom Young as well from last year hurts their outside backs and their meter eaterage. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I think, pot, like, you put Marzu back in this side and, it, like, geez, two of the potentially two of the top five best wingers in the comp, hmm. um, you know, that's going to take away from any fullback's output, especially in attack. So, yeah, it's disappointing, but it is what it is with Ponga. I think if you if you held on to Ponga, you don't sell him this week. Because he's got no. the dragons next week, and um, oh, could be easy. I, yeah, Ponga could absolutely tear it up next week against the dragons. Um, yeah, Kai Pierce, Paul, we've spoke about Adam Elliott. Yeah, yeah. Jaden Braley's back. He's on the bench though. Well, I think. Do you think Jaden Braley eventually starts? I think if they keep going the way they're going, yes. I think Crossland will lose a spot. He hasn't been great to start the season, Crossland. Yeah. And I think Bailey probably comes back in. Righto. Uh, moving on. Sharks, Raiders. So, Eros in, and they're going to be moving Talakai through the middle. 
interesting. Yeah, he's gone to the edge, Talakai. I think they just their yeah, hands edge. been forced because fuck, man, the amount of injuries they've had in the middle. I just don't think they have a choice. Um, yeah. Look, I know people are like, "Oh, Iro could be a savior here or there." I wouldn't touch it. Just like I wouldn't touch a certain Parramatta half we're going to get to this week. Just, you you know, you, it's not going to fuck your team if you wait a couple of weeks. Just see what happens. Players could come back. He could go out of the side. Just be patient. Um, I'd wait on Iro. You know, even if you got to a picky, he's not going to play for the next week, next two weeks. He's not going to lose cash. Just wait and see what happens. Yeah, I hope to God he gives... Mulatalo, like I like Talakai last year had like twenty something try assists. Mm. He was an absolute gun. For yeah. some reason last week he just did not want to to give Ronaldo that ball. But I think that was a a compound of so many other issues in the Sharks last week. I don't think that was a direct influence, like a direct thing with Talakai. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Iro does, how he performs. But, yeah, the Sharks are decimated through through their pack at the moment. So, oh. um, Trindle oh. and Hines, Jesus, oh. man. Jesus I, Christ, that looks shit. They, Hines' confidence is shot. He just didn't want to do anything on the weekend. He, I think he kicked the boy on the full three times, and he just... <laughs> Oh, fuck. Hey, don't remind me. I captain the guy. Oh, I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> do you, I was wait, absolutely do you, death riding think, that. Do you think Trindle might be fucking Hines up? I'd, I don't think so, purely because last year when Hines played with Trindle, Hines actually scored well. I'm just like, is Trindle... So, yeah. Do they want to be the same guy? Like, does Trindle want to dominate the ball? Hines wants to dominate the ball. I don't know. It's just, I'm not confident that that halves pairing is working yet. I'm, obviously, yeah. it's only early days. They had the back end of last year. Uh, but, yeah, they just look fucking sloppy in attack. Yeah, they do. They do. And I just... um, It's like they've changed, like, their whole attack in general. I just don't know. Like, obviously, last year, it was all Hines. Everything was through Hines. Um, now, all of a sudden, fitzy has gone, all right, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to be going half Trindle, half Hines. And I yeah. think because of that, Hines has gone, all right, well, you know, is this my side or not? So, yeah. I, it's one of those things where I think we're just going to have to wait on Hines. I don't think... It's a rush to sell him at the moment. He will he will um, drop cash. There's no doubt about it. But I think yeah. Hines is one of those players that after next week's buy, the Sharks could come out the following week and Hines could be back to his best. And if you trade him out, you're, uh, if you trade him out next week purely because of his buy and don't use the depth in your side and then you have to sit and watch Hines play next week, I'm the week after, and he, 150. It's gonna be, um, it's gonna be a tough watch. So I'd hold Hines. I wouldn't trade him out. Um, Raiders, you're happy with Rapana? Wow, nice pod. Yeah, he had a good game last week. Um, honestly, tipping the Raiders this week to beat the Sharks of all the fucking outs the Raiders have. Uh, Sharks have. I think the Raiders middles are going to have a fucking field day yeah. against the Sharks. Uh, I think Ethan Strange is playing really good. Um, mm-hmm. Fogarty's boots been great. Even last week, like they pushed the Warriors to the brink in New Zealand. A few things went their way. They could have won that game. So, fuck, the Raiders have impressed me a lot to start the year. Yeah. The Raiders already have their identity this year. Oh. If you play the yeah. Raiders, make sure you're ready to go down for a very, very tough fight for 80 minutes. Yeah. I don't think that the, I don't think this side, like I, I was like I was wrong. I thought that the Raiders had that bottom three, bottom four, bottom three, potentially even spoon at the start of the season, and um, they've just absolutely 
blown that out of the park. They're, like, their middles is, are up there with, you know, potentially the best in the game. Oh, I, good. I mean, look, Tarpany, Hudson Young, Elliot Whitehead, Morgan Smithies, Tom Starling, Hosking, and Horsburgh. Papalili. Fuck. Papalili. <laughs> like, like, just a fucking crazy forward rotation. And, but, like, bad. I've been so impressed with Ethan Strange. Like, how fucking good is he playing for a rookie? Yeah, I know. Jeez. Yeah. And then even and the outside it, backs, you got Savage, Sebastian Chris, Tomoko, fucking yeah. Albert Hopperwadi. Like they're all playing so good. Yeah, it's unbelievable. They've got they've got a lot of young up and coming players coming through as well. I yeah. Raiders are a genuine smoky for the top eight this season, barring injuries. Uh last game of the round. So Eels and the Tigers, and then once we get through this, we'll talk about our trade targets, what we're going to be doing, what we think we should do with Cleary, who to go with. So keep in touch, keep in tune. Um, Gutho, Sivo back from his suspension. Uh, Panasini, Morgan Harper, Sean Russell. The man of the hour, Talagi, Moses is out. He plays. Big loss. Yeah, Blaze comes in. He played center last week and now he's moved to 5'8". I think he is a five eight. I could be wrong. I think he he's apparently like an absolutely gun junior. Like just has all the accolades in the juniors. I think he is a five eight. I could be wrong on that. Um, but it's a different level when you get to the NRL. And there's gonna he looked good last week, but there's gonna be a hell of a lot more pressure on him this week. Pairing with Dylan Brown, I think yeah. he's a wait and watch, wait and see, and then maybe pull the trigger if he looks good. Oh yeah, if he looks good, is he dual? Can you get him in the centers, or is he five eight yeah. only? No, nah, he's dual. Can, no, can I'm, I'm sorry. I think he's only center wing. He's only center wing. I think so. I could be wrong. Let me check. So, yeah, we are. Yeah. Do you know what he? Like if you want, if you have Gagai in your side and you want to fuck him off, if Talagi looks really, really good this week, he's your man. Yeah, same, same thing. If you have Tua Piki, even if you have Burbo yeah. and you're like, look, Burbo's not doing it for me, and you have got a pretty good center wing, maybe go Burbo to him. Look, he's he's an option for a few players, but I think just wait this week, see how he looks at five eight before you make a decision. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, yeah, the rest of the side there names itself. The Cardi yeah. party's named, even though he's fractured ribs, fractured ribs, so he's not playing, he won't play this week. Yeah. Um, I dare say Maddo starts. Maddo, surely, fucking Maddo gets a start. If Maddo yeah, doesn't start, yeah. Brad Arthur's a fucking drug addict. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. <sighs> like, surely, it has to be Sean Lane. Madison and and Hopgood, like I didn't think so. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah, Tigers, Buller, Charlie Staines, Fatape, Olam, Olam's back. Olam looked really, really good last week. He yeah, looked good. Uh, Lockie Galvin, obviously we've spoke about him. Aiden so, Caesar, Stefano looks solid. Appy is the man. Um, Clemmer, I um Papa Lili. Now he's looking good. Yes. Good. He looks fucking good. But yeah, I don't want to get overexcited, but he does look good. Yeah, he looks good. I'm eyeing him off because if he can put together another week of a decent score, he is a pod that I would like yeah. to pick up because the Tigers don't have a buy for a long time now. And um, if he can, if he can get back to any like it's a big matchup this week against his old club. If he can get back to anything that he was when he was at the Eels. Holy dooly. Yeah, be afraid. Yeah, he looks good. Um, yeah. But no, um, Fanil Pole, you're eyeing him off. I was looking at him. Good base. I just think there's other options, a little bit cheaper at front row. Like Tommy Hazelton's caught my eye a little bit more just because of the injuries or Flegler. Um yeah, look, I was looking at him, but I I'd what I'd want to watch him another week. I know his price will 
change. He didn't have a great first week. I think he come off the bench. So just what I, me personally, I want to watch him this week. Yep. Yep, I agree. Um, so far, Kapoa, Fine. It's a good bench for Seifarth and Fine. Fine. No, I can't pronounce his last name. So it's Fine. I'm not even going to Fine. Jesus Christ. Um, righto. <laughs> Let's. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good bench for them. Put it that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's talk trades. Let's talk what is going on. Who in your side is out this week? What do you do with Cleary? Do you hold Cleary? I know you haven't got him, but if you had him, what would you do? Would you hold him? If it was two weeks, I'd hold him. If it was four weeks, I wouldn't. But the problem with the Panthers is I think they're in a position where they're probably going well enough. Like if they win this week, let's say they even win next week. I don't know who they're, they're playing Manly next week. Maybe they just go, you know what, leave him. We don't need him. Like, take as long as you want type thing. But if they lose the next couple of weeks, maybe they'll want to rush him back. I think it all depends on the situation the Panthers are in. But if you knew he was only going to be two weeks, I'd hold him. But it just depends because of everything I've read, it's two to four weeks. So it just depends on the time. Yeah, I... Geez, I'd love a crystal ball right now. Because if it is only two weeks, like I know that the the um the injury, it's just the strain. So it's just yeah. a um it, it, he hasn't done a tear or anything else like that. So he could generally be back in two weeks' time. Like a strained ham hamstring, you're looking at yeah, anywhere between that two to four weeks. In two weeks' time, he could be he could be good to go. It's not yeah. like he pulled up out of the game and and he was like, oh, no, I've, I've done something really, really bad. He walked off the field completely fine. Yeah. Um, I said two weeks, I'd cold him if I knew it, but you just don't know. So it's, yeah, it's personal choice, personal preference, whatever you feel. But yeah, so it's two weeks. if you're trading Cleary, where do you go? Me personally, look, I'd either go. Sam Walker, goal kicking for the Roosters. I think Roosters got a lot of points in them. They look really good. Um, I know he didn't score great base power. He doesn't have that in him, but he's got a lot of attacking upside. I think the Roosters look great. Ben Hunt's an option. Daly Cherry Evans is an option. Another option is I'd move him up to um, Luke. If you got Luke Brooks, move him up to half. I'd consider Dylan Brown or maybe like a Jaden Campbell if he looks good. Maybe wait a week. Yep. Even a Luke Metcalf who's kicking goals for New Zealand. I have him. I think he looks good. But there's there's a lot of options. There's plenty of options you could consider. Um, but those are just a couple I've thought of. Yeah, I like Sam Walker. I just don't like Sam Walker's matchup this week. I mean, he could come out and score 60 points, right? Let's just say Sam Walker comes out, gets you 60 or 70. I'd be happy with that. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and then he's obviously got the Bulldogs next week. I cool. think that is, yeah. I mean, that's there's you could be anything right there. I if you haven't got Brooks, potentially go down to Brooks. Yeah. Um. Geez, there's not much, is there? You could go DCE if you like the matchups. You could go Ben Hunt. He's got a couple of okay games. Benny Hunt. He can turn up. And they're playing well. Um, yeah, look, there isn't a lot, but, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, that would just about do it, I reckon. Is yeah. there anything else you want to touch on? Like, no, I know that's... that there's quite, there's quite a few, actually. Like, if, if you were to really go over the, <laughs> the absolute carnage that once was. There's fucking heaps of injuries. Like, obviously... You got Haas, you got Walsh, you got Pierre Cora, Mitch Moses, Cleary, Lindsay Collins, Sorensen, Rudolph, Hunt, Kanukin, Tuapiki, Tino, Cotter. Cotter's named, Laybutt's named. Sandon Smith is a big out. Well, not a big out because Kiri's back, but I think they've rushed Kiri back in purely because of that. Yeah. 
Um, Cardi Party, Cam Murray's named, even though he's got a, a knee bursitis. Billy Smith injured again. That's his life. Yeah. Um, Jack Whiten's apparently got a knee issue, but he's named. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, fuck. Like the so, list goes on. There's more. There's honestly, there's 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 more. And fuck. like, there's 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 definitely people out there that would have Tino Walsh, Cleary Moses, Pia Cora. There'd be there'd be players out there that have have about eight red dots in their side oh, this week, fuck. man. Think Look, about that. There's some guys you could probably hold off, wait, depending if but if you've got nuffs. You're in fucking trouble because oh, you got to. I said it from yeah. I said it from the start, man. I said if you're going to start, make sure you have depth in your side. Do not yeah. start with nuffs in your side. And this anyone is exactly listen, why. For anyone listening, this is why depth is important. Try to not have nuffs. Try to have even cheap guys that are playing. Because fucking hell, with the HIAs and shit at the moment, it's fucking chaos. And weeks like this will happen and you'll be left with 15 players and, um, yeah, you'll be battling. Yeah, 100%. I mean, look, it all looks well and good to start with, um, you know, all the guns in all the positions and stuff like that. But then teams this Tuesday comes around and bends you over and, and whispers fuck. sweet nothings into your ear. Yeah. And you have to listen to it. So yeah. Anyway, enough hammering <laughs> people. I feel I feel sorry for them actually. I don't. Yeah. But anyway, um, that just about wraps it up. I. What's your? Um, do you have any trades locked in this week, or are you still um and iron? Look, the trades I'm um and iron about are Palace to Tommy Hazelton, Helam Lukey to Kai Pierce Paul, potentially Wade Egan to Appy. We'll see what happens with Wade Egan. Yep. I'm potentially looking at going Cleary down to Sam Walker and then Smithies to Kai Pierce and then Levi up to Appy, which you don't Woo. like. Woo! It's been but, a big... Look, Boy, what's Levi's break even? It's still... It's, it's like minus 11, so he probably makes another 10K. <laughs> I think he scores 10 points this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I I just I need to f I need to get rid of Levi very quickly. And if I have a ticket out of there Take this it. week to go up to Appy, like because the way I see it is if I get Appy in and he makes a hundred K, then when Cleary comes back, I could go Appy down to Lusick. And then bank the 300k that I need to go Sam Walker up back up to um back up to Cleary and then happy days. Yeah. Or so, even you could even trade a gun center wing down to like Blaze Tulagi if you like the way he's playing for Parramatta. Bank the cash yeah. there and keep like Robson happy if you want. Yeah. If you're trade my 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 last remark, if you trade out Cleary this week. Make sure you have a plan to try and get him back because if he's back in two to three weeks' time and you don't have him, you you're going him. to find it very, very tough to get him back. Yeah, you're going to want him. Yeah, you're going to want him. All right, guys, that'll do it. Wrapping it up, an hour and 10 minutes of um, us talking absolute shit. So, <laughs> cheers, Max. Um, let us know how he's all went in the comments. Let us know your trades this week. And um, let us know how bad TLT fucked you yeah. in the arse. Fucking bent you over. Let us know how bad it was, guys. And um, I'll see you all in the comments. Good luck for this week. And we'll be posting our final trades and final captain choices on our Facebook page on Thursday. Toodaloo. Ta-da. Farewell. <laughs>